Alright lads, welcome back. Tarts of Iron 4 and the New Order mod as the sovereignty of Western Russia. You guys have not yet seen the previous episode, so if you have any recommendations, requests, suggestions, statements or anything like that, I have not seen them yet because you have not made them yet because you have not seen the episode at the time of this recording. Last episode, what's this? Oh, we need convoys for that ball. Yeah, we lost our own name. Yeah, that's a shame. Is on is on Vilpori? Or Car uh, Carzana? Yeah. Mm. Oh, and there's one in Arkhangelsk. Balls. <sighs> Alright, fine. The Congress of Vologda replaced no voting with elite voting effective change, political power gain minus 5%, civility plus 2.5%, replaced one party state with controlled opposition effective change, daily political power gain minus 0.1%, civility plus 2.5%, ideology direct defense minus 25%, gets when the Congress begins. Before our conquest of Vlogda and the neutral zone that extended around us and acquired a reputation for peace and stability, we can use this to our advantage. The Congress promised so long ago must take place, and it can take place in Vlogda with representatives from all major political factions. Invited deliberations will proceed until a cabinet for the Tsar's first group government is formed. It is expected that there will likely be considerable uh, discord between the factions, but regardless of what may occur, the Congress of Vlogda will be historic, establishing the first monarchist government in Russia in 40 years. bit more than that. That puts us at 1926. Yeah, a bit more than that. We will not let that opportunity escape us. No, we will not. Industry management one fantastic. Need to get more of that stuff. But the 11 point stability used to be way higher. What's going on? Oh, the over overextended administrations, of course, of course. How is this looking? Oh yes, tax hike, please. 2.3%, we should be getting that up at least about 4% uh, through focuses alone. Oh, fine. Well, this didn't get an increase. Oh, that's a shame. Economic sphere, of course. How is two in doing? July of 66, and I haven't gotten to the regional stage yet, so. Also, I tagged over to Cheetah to, and made them do the decisions for their unique... I made them do their, their uh, unique development decisions. They never do them. I, I, I don't think Far Eastern AI maybe... Far Eastern AI maybe never does them. I'm screwing the realm. If I was playing as the Germans, that would be automatically translated for me. That would be... Yeah, it's fantastic. All right, election year. The people of Russia are gearing up for election season. An idea once unthinkable scant decades before now it is up to the Russian people to decide the fate of their nation and their leaders. Political parties, both big and small, are preparing their supporters and their backers across the nation. Thousands of volunteers, campaign staff and candidates make ready to depart for the rallies, tours, speeches and debates that will dominate the headlines for the coming months. Candidates will be scrutinized, issues debated and, and at its end, millions of voters will be able to make their voices heard by the powers that be. The NTS. For strength and stability. Knox decisions to campaign for the NTS. Right, so who, how are we doing? Arctic Russia, NTS weak. That's interesting. I, I would have assumed that because... Why? You see, I find it interesting that in Arkhangelsk, the, the cadets are doing exceptionally well. I would have said it was the NTS because the Soviets have their, you know, their trade unions, we have syndicates, you know, it, it's two sides of the same coin, I'm kind of surprised to see that. I imagine we're doing well around Samara. Yes. NTS lead, yeah, that, yeah, yeah that's because of that. Okay, VNS is mostly leading though. Transvolga. Yeah, we're not doing very well at all, actually. No. No, no, no. Let's go for the Transvolga. There is the most amount of people there. We shall campaign in Transvolga, getting a random amount of regional support. Suppress minority voting. That's hilarious. Nice. Decreases voter turnout in minority states. I, I don't think we had that decision in Shulgin. Increases minority rights, legal and equality policy effectiveness, change in popularity of authoritarian democracy, 5.5%. Very nice. Thank you so much. 
Now, securing the realm. Oh, we have to read this first. The Congress begins. The Volanda Congress has begun. The events were fairly, went fairly as predicted, beginning with the filtering in of various officials from all around our burgeoning uh, Zardom. Most of the primary three factions were in full attendance, well prepared for the goings on within the Congress. As a hush fell over the buzzing crowd of, of attendees, opening statements, minutes, and other obligatory introductions were made before cutting to the chase of three factions laying out their arguments. The cadets began first, predictably, their rhetoric tended towards reform. Okay. I know it's alternate history, Mod, but there, the idea of there being, like, the Liberal Democrats amongst the ROVS, in a, especially in a world where the Overton window has shifted massively to the right, is just hilarious. I just want to make that known. They proposed, yeah, shit like this, proposed rights for, for minorities, movements towards a progressive future, and most importantly, the creation of a constitutional monarchy with a strong democratic system, the last part of that is based. The VNS, in their own stuffy way, argued their points passionately, recalling the nostalgia of the old empire. They made it clear that they fought for conservative but democratic values. Little arguments for reform could be found among their statement, and they ultimately established themselves as a clear status quo candidate. Next came the speech from the NTS: populism based, nationalism based, freedom based, monarchism potentially based. Were their four key st uh, sticking points? They made a firm argument towards rejecting the idea of both liberalism and redism of holding the Russian man above any such system. They, however, were not without testaments towards democracy. How authentic that claim or its execution is or will be is unclear. Reactions are mixed at current and only time will tell who will get their way and move towards change regardless. Fantastic. Any event from that? No. I assume... Uh, let me find... Yeah, bear... No, that, 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 right, that's not... Yeah, I meant... Yeah. Okay. Okay, we're actually not doing too bad, actually. I hope that suppressing the minorities doesn't actually hurt us. Surely it won't. But either way. Now, the museum. In the estate of Victoria Avria Nova, the event of the season was playing out a rare even evening of peace and the anarchy had allowed the heiress to exhibit her exquisite collection of priceless artwork. She stood resplendent in a ruby dress at the centre of the gallery. The artwork that surrounded her and the guests. Good job, Italy. Um, were of the finest of Russian artists, saved from the fires of the Natsaks of Perm. M many of the works on display were from the times of the old Tsars, uh, works on the minds of such great painters as Ivan Shishkin. Italy joins the OFN. Good to see. Ivan Shishkin and Valentin Sarov, masterpieces of um, Isaac Levitin, and a scant few pieces of the great Vasily uh, Kandinsky. The guests were enthralled by the works around them. Some of the oldest among them remembered the grand exhibitions of the old imperial court that this event tried to replicate. The air was heavy with the nostalgia for the old days when the Russian Empire stood tall and its people did not bend to foreign invaders. Oh, excuse me. The mood was one of longing for the best of the old times. And yet, it was un under it all, there was a current of hope, as the many nobles of the new empire passed by the art of their forebears, as the longing passed from their hearts. Uh, and, uh, they were filled with a strange resolve, the Russia of their grandfathers had not died, though the enemies of Russia had tried their best to kill it, it was merely asleep in the hearts of its people. As Victoria mingled with the myriad nobility, she drifted to the centerpiece of the exhibition, the final piece that had been saved from Perm as Wagner's cult burned away the masterpieces of Russia's past. Why the How the hell... I'm surprised he didn't do that already. Like, like... I oh, know, that's just weird. That, that nearly would have been the first things he would have done, not the thing that he did as his regime was collapsing around him. Now, by far the oldest piece on, uh, oldest, uh, piece on display, and guarded by a brother of the Order of St. George, the icon of Christ the Redeemer, in the hearts of everyone present, the one constant was a desire to redeem the Empire in the eyes of God and the people. As the event came to its end, Victoria found herself in front of the icon again, praying that the future was one they would uh, um, that would make it all worth it. A fine night for nostalgia. Nostalgia's fantastic. Dangerous, though. Securing the realm. Nah, no, nah, no, that's not bad. Think, yeah, it can be dangerous. Now, securing the realm. Reduce the administrative strain in our state. Our administrative efficiency will begin to improve. God, we're getting so many improvements to that. Physical power plus 75 gets event ghosts of the past. To ensure stability in the sovereignty, it is critical that we focus... It is critical that we focus... Uh, blah, 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 that we focus on addressing domestic issues. The first of which is the proper administration of our territory. There is simply too much to effectively control, and both bandits and remnants of past enemies abound within it. We must take action to this end. We will focus the political, economic, and military strength on the security of our realm by combining the efforts of the Imperial Army, the Ekrana, and the legions of administrators now entering government. We will ensure stability in our realm against the partisans and dissidents that threaten us. Polling updated. Okay, fantastic. Now we we'll go for Central Russia. Ghosts of the past. Sergei had seen it all. An old man, he had seen many things in his lifetime, born at the turn of the century to simple peasants. Is this is this the one in... It's in Archangelic, is it not? Alright, let's read on. 
Uh, born at the turn of the century to simple peasants, most of his early life would have been spent trying to, far trying to farm the cold hard earth in the north around Arkansas. Yeah, that's right, he dies, doesn't he? He gets his pension and he fucking dies. It has been hard, it has been a hard yet simple life where he didn't have to worry if his head would be shot off tomorrow morning. He grew up around the city on a farm just south of it. Sergei had a happy life, he remembered until he was forced to fight with the Tsar in the First World Conflict. He remembered how he fought first with the Tsar, then the Provisional Government, and then the Reds. He remembered the bleeding, how they had fought and lost, and how he had been now been forced to, and how he, and how he had now been forced to now beg on the streets to survive. That is why uh, he didn't say anything as the front rose and fell once more, and he remained silent as the Imperial Eagle flew once more over the city. Sergei didn't believe in the Red Dream anymore, but these men, they fought for men who fought with the Germans during the West Russian conflict. In them, they carried hope. He chuckled to himself as he sat um, on the street corner, troops marching in the streets. In his life, he had learned one thing, one simple truth. Politicians and generals fought, but people like him would always be forgotten in the end. Ah, fuck! God damn it. Just keeping an eye on it and all. Not close enough of a night, it would seem. Now, where were we? Alrighty. Da, da, da. He chuckled to himself as he sat on the street corner. Troops marching in the streets in, in his... Yeah, da, da, da. However, as, he's, as he watched these uh, those young men smile, he felt convicted. Perhaps, perhaps um, they would be different in the end. Maybe an old man's cynicism would be proven wrong. He laid back as his eyes grew heavy and breathing grew heavy. His thoughts were of home, his thoughts were of his family. And as he did, the old man Sergei gave one last smile as he drifted to eternal sleep. Oh, I, never mind. This wasn't the event where he gets a pension. An old ghost gets his deserved rest. I think, I think we do get an event about someone getting a pension, though. An old guy getting a pension. Oh, you beat two. You beat the two. Oh, but I think the game annexed it for you. I don't think you properly beat them. I don't remember getting seeing the uh, pop-up. Carp plans for Smyslovsky. Increase security, security service policy effectiveness. Decreases military supervision, military policing policy effectiveness. Add Boris Smyslovsky, which grants daily personal power gain plus 0.1. Encryption plus 0.5. Decryption plus 0.5. Change the popularity of conservative and authoritarian democracy 5%. Replace security service with data cohesion, effective change, daily political power gain plus 0.05, stability plus 7.5%, encryption and decryption plus 5% each. Civilian intelligence to others is minus 10%, and policy cost per capita plus 42%. Who's getting replaced, so? You? No, you're the economy minister, you? Security minister, yeah, you're getting replaced. I imagine. The chief of the Ukraine, Boris Mislavsky, has proven a loyal and dedicated servant of the Tsar. Under his watch, citizens, partisans, saboteurs, and spies alike have been found and exiled from our nation, and how uh, and he could be even more effective with additional support. By increasing both the funding and operational attitude of the Ukraine, Mislavsky will be able to more efficiently take care of problems before they become such. It is possible that, the, that his zealousness may cause some damage to the Tsar's image among the people, but we think that the stability will bring is well worth the cost. Ah, suppress minority voting again. God, we're going to have a... If we get this decision as frequently as we have been getting it, we're going to be very strong. We keep getting 5% popularity every time. It's really strong. We are now the largest party. Fantastic. We can mobilize 476,000 men. 20 million people are here. Fantastic. <laughs> the only Soviets in Russia. Unless you count these guys in Central Asia, which I don't, because it's not Russia. How many trucks do we have? Not many, two and a half thousand. Yeah, the RNSV. Yeah, we also even we even have our own um, our own NATSOC party. It's RNSD. SD reminds me of the security divisions. Now, an honest mistake. Excerpt from a Crana report dated November 14th, redacted. Suspect 39, Fedorov Alexander Iv uh, Ivanovich. Sex male, age 39. Suspe uh, suspect apprehended 4th of October in the vicinity of POI number 5. See attached suspect observed leaving POI number 5 a total of 7 times in the last 7 days. Investigations by agents Ivanov and Matsev revealed the presence of subversive elements within POI number 5. Subsequent apprehension of three former operatives of the West Russian Revolutionary Front led to a decision for the apprehension of suspect. Suspect questioned for 32 hours by agent uh, Ivanov. Enhanced methods utilized. Suspect confessed to attending pro uh, WRF gatherings within an annex uh, structure attached to POI number 5. Suspect sent to redacted for further questioning. Addendum based on information from suspect. Search and seizure, seizure operations were conducted on POI number 5 and attached annex. 
Pro WRF materials located at POI number 5 Annex building contained Orthodox Church run medical charity clinic. Suspect identified as clinic volunteer. Information given by suspect during questioning likely false investigation as to reason. Ongoing an honest mistake, surely. Wait, did we just apprehend some random dude who was a volunteer? Sure. Now, how are we doing? NTS lead. Eric, yeah, right, we haven't campaigned in the URL region yet. Let's get go there. Now, the partisan problem. We get some of the, the problem with the partisans. While we defeated our enemies, we didn't kill every last one of their supporters. Unfortunately, this resulted in a number of partisan holdouts that stretched from Arkhangelsk in the north to Samar in the south. A patchwork of fortresses, bandits, and leftover uh, disenfranchised soldiers, all believing in a myriad of ideologies and knowing loyalty to one man or the other. Red bundle of sticks and even radical Democrats are present in, are present in these holdouts, even if they weren't raiding our caravans, attacking villages who have professed loyalty, uh, who have professed their loyalty to us, or slaughtering soldiers when they get a chance, they would be presenting an issue. But right now, the rampant we have to deal with. This problem as soon as possible to ensure that the Tsar's rule is secured. Ah, uh, and here comes the West Siberian People's Republic. An avid supporter of the obscure Soviet official Joseph Stalin, not with the new lore. Joseph Stalin ran West Siberia in the new lore. And then it collapsed upon his death. See how we're doing. Oh, yeah, we're doing really well in the chat. Really well in the trans world. Oh no! Oh, never mind. They actually have a lead in, in the trans world. This only runs for another forty-eight days. Oh shit! Are we gonna win? I hope so. We have more pie chart popularity. <laughs> Is that what counts? Also, Caesar has like 20 production units. We have like probably three times, three, four times their population, more even. Yeah, even four four times their population. And we only have an extra six production units in comparison. That sucks. The problem of partisans on a tip from informants. Andrei Bobrov led his men to the cottage outside of Perm, searching for subversive elements, arranging themselves for entry. Andrei hefted his rifle and kicked in the door, striking a man who had been standing behind us before rushing inside with his own men following closely behind. As he did so, he saw that he had clearly interrupted a meeting and seeing one of its attendees begin to raise a rifle of their own, he held down his trigger. The firefight was brutal and thanks to the effects of automatic weapons in close quarters, extremely brief, and it was over. Andrei counted six dead partisans, among them a boy of no older than 15. He swore to himself... Killing boys themselves like, likely forced into participation it was not part of the plan, but it was uh, but, but it was what had happened. Placing sentries outside the cottage, he and the others got to work searching for documents, messages, radio frequencies, or anything else that could lead them to other groups. Word had come down from the top to focus on looking for such an Andre was not a man to disobey orders. Now suppress the minorities again. This is just the beginning. Root them out. Change the popularity of conservative and authoritarian democracy 5% each. Decreases military supervision, military policing policy effectiveness. Increased security, data cohesion, policy effectiveness, manpower minus 300, political power plus 50. The partisans. Wait, what are all these decisions about? Campaigning? Yes. Alright, go for uh, Transvalga again, I think. Yeah, go for Transvalga then. Now. The partisans are proving to be more difficult to defeat than was previously anticipated. They are, there are too many of them and they are too well concealed in the vast forest that dots the sovereignty. We must take more drastic action. We will employ every tool at our disposal. The Ukraine collaborators overwhelming military strength. Whatever is required it will be expensive and more blood will be shed than is likely needed. But this problem must end. It is, it is making the state look weak and surrounded by potential enemies as we are. Such a perception cannot be afforded. Next time is online. Damn. It's much earlier than I, than I did it. You're probably not focusing on your economy as much, are you? 
No, oh, yeah, you haven't, you haven't done any of this. I haven't done any of the economy trade. I should do another um, another spare playthrough. Fully reformist this time. Gang of foreign angels over here. VNS lead. VNS, 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 VNS. Holy shit. NTS lead, NTS lead. VNS lead. VNS lead, NTS lead. VNS, VNS, NTS, NTS. Holy shit, man. Are we going to lose the fucking NTS? Or the, the VNS, rather. How is one supposed to do this legitimately? VNS lead, VNS lead, KD. Yeah, we're going to fucking lose if, if it's based according to this. Doesn't matter how much of the pie chart we occupy. Doesn't matter if we're 38 and they're 29. If it's based according to that, we're gonna fucking lose. And there's only 16 days left anyway, so no time for another campaign. Maybe that'll swing it. Oh, the Emperor's Peace. Gain base stability plus 5%, political purpose 75, reduce the administrative strain in our state, our administrative efficiency will begin to improve, we get, we've get, we gotten so many of those, man. Through hard, uh, the, the hard work and folks' effort, or yeah, it's supposed to be through hard work, through hard work and folks' effort, we have managed to pacify many of, our, of the partisan bands that have plagued our nation, though bandits and the criminals will always exist, and into large scale disorder means a, con a consequent rise in both popular confidence regarding and political support of the government. We can now turn our attention to one of the other many matters requiring attention to confirm that, at least internally, our security situation has been rectified. I hope I don't have to reload and use decision that no checks to campaign, uh, campaign everywhere all at once. Uh, I don't want to cheat, but if I have to, I have no problem doing so. Updates again before uh, before the final result comes in. I don't know what that'll do if we lose. Alright, as the Congress of Vologda progressed, delegates from the various factions made their voices and position heard, each trying to influence the will and build the support of the Russian people. Each was given a chance to speak, and each believed in their heart that they would be victorious. The Constitutional Democrats, better known as the Cadets, and under the leadership of the eternal reformist Roman Gule, pledged to make Russia a place for all of its peoples, Russian and non-Russian alike. They promised, re they promised regional autonomy, the respect of cultural and religious tradition, and the liberalization of the Tsar's regime, believing that to do so would, uh, would create a, stra a state that all could be proud to be part of. The Conservatives, under the leadership of the old imperial bureaucrat Vasily Shulkin, promised a return to, uh, to the values of the Russian Empire. They vowed to ensure strength and stability under the guidance of a strong and centralized government, watched over by an equally strong and authoritative Tsar. The Solidarists, um, or Solidarists, as it's been 
misspelled there. Under the leadership of the Firebrand. Uh, oh my God! Look, it's it's splicing the English and Russians and Russian spelling. That's uh, that's icky. Solzhenitsyn uh, offered an alternative direction based on anti-red thought. They pledged great victories, new glories for Russia and the people under the guiding hand of the Tsarist government. As the end of the Congress drew near, the millions of votes cast across the sovereignty were counted. Oh, nice. Took this. All right. How, how do we do? How do we do? Overall. NTS lead, NTS lead, VNS, 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 fuck. VNS, VNS, NTS, VNS. Uh, shit. The votes are in. Oh, we still won. Somehow. Oh my god, look how close it was! Between us and the VNS, 0.3%. Holy shit. Oh, so they did do it according to this. VNS won in Onega, Vitegra, K, uh, Constitutional Democrats won in Arkhangelsk, VNS, 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 Veliki Ustyug, NTS, VNS, Thai, VNS, Victory, VNS, KD, Thai, NTS, Victory in Vologda, VNS, Victory in Mantarovo, NTS in Kostrom, NTS, VNS in Sharia, NTS, VNS in Semyonov, VNS, Victory in Vilgodsk. Holy shit, look how close that was, man. Yeah, we, we carried Samara. Yeah. Look how valuable Samara is. Very valuable. We got a total of 181 votes. I think, that, yeah, it's 181. And, um... Oh my god, man. 105 of those votes came from Samara and Nizhny Novgorod alone. We've got... We've really got to build on that. Though I wouldn't... I honestly wouldn't mind, um... An NTS VNS coalition combining the parts that I like about the VNS, such as, you know, the Christian corporatism, the, um... The anti-redism, that kind of, the nationalism, obviously the Venus are nationalists as well, and, and, but also combining the, the Ruthification and, and, and the Strong Tsar part of the VNS. That's kind of the ideal situation, I won't lie. Damn, that was so close, man. Look at that. We got 181 provincial delegates, the VNS got 180. Cadets got 74, what? Well, where did the cadets actually win? How the hell did they get 74? They got seven in Arkhangelsk. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, they got four in Arkhangelsk. They got... That's five. Six, seven... Oh, okay. Never mind. I see now. I see now. That's fine. Whew! The Solidarists, victorious among the thousands of supporters of Alexander Solzhenitsyn, gathered together in the Congress, uh, Congress's grand meeting hall was a young man named Mikhail. Mikhail had been a Solidarist from the moment he discovered the politics in Vyatka, utterly entranced both by Solzhenitsyn's fiery rhetoric and, and by the grand futures and prosperity for Russia that had promised. He had watched as his friend was uh, were seduced by the old relics who aligned themselves behind Shulgin, or the effeminate and western weaklings who supported Gul, and he did not understand it. The Solidarists offered the future, and the others offered only stagnation or collapse in return. When the results were announced and Solzhenitsyn was proclaimed Prime Minister-elect, Mikhail had to find a place to sit down, overcome with emotion. Everything he had hoped for Russia got to turn the song I, I was, uh... I was listening to a couple of songs when I was, uh... Well, quite a few songs, to be honest. When I was walking about today, this song came on. And I, I had it on full volume. Well, I had I had, I had all the other songs on full volume. This nearly blew, blew the ears off me. Oh my god, I always have to turn it down. Now... Everything he'd hoped to rush from those early er, from those early days in Vyatka through the news of imperial conquest throughout the now sovereignty was now about to come true. Solzhenitsyn and the Solidarists ably helped by men uh, such as he would, regardless of what the failures in the other factions would say or try, bring glory and strength to Russia, and in doing so, claim the future for themselves. To glory! We got 181 out of 435 total provincial delegates. 41.6% of the vote. Oh my god, man. We beat them out by 0.3%. <laughs> Mad. I'm glad it was close though, because it was clearly incredibly close. I, I thought we were going to lose when I was looking at it, when I was looking at this screen. So, but so I'm glad that because um, you know we have 46% and they have 28. It, it used to be closer, I think, but um, well, it was closer. But I think us winning the election gave us some popularity there. Like, like I'm glad to see that it's represented as being incredibly close. Oh my! But yeah, yeah, that that's the ideal situation because like we don't have a majority here, you know, like. NTS VNS coalition is the ideal scenario. You know, you represent what? 82.9% of the population of that coalition. That's huge. Get the Russification in. Get the Christian corporatism in. Get the strong Tsar in. 
What else? Uh, Anti-redism, but that's kind of universal. The bright hour knocks, indeed it does. Increases political parties, controlled opposition policy effectiveness, slightly increased minority rights, legal and policy policy effectiveness, politics will change, NTS becomes the ruling party, public elections will not be held. Just, just, um, fair information, that's the same for every party. Public elections are never held, whether it's the VNS or KD. Add Alexander Solzhenitsyn, which grants daily political power gain, minus 0 0.05, need consumer goods, minus 5%. Add Arkady Stilipin. That's not... Yeah, that, that, that's not the slipping. It, is it his son? Grandson? No, oh, oops. Okay. Somehow I don't think it's this guy who was born in 1822. No. Uh, spouses. No children. I thought that it was Stilipin's son, Piotr Stilipin's son. Born, died. No children. Okay. Bam. Uh, add Arcady Stilipin, which grants supply consumption minus 5%, improve relations, opinion plus 10%, decryption plus 5%, gets meant a different path. As many had expected under a monarchist regime, reactionary sentiment has prevailed. Whoa, 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 whoa. This is revolutionary. We are moving in a new direction. Shulgin is, Shulgin is the v, Shulgin is the reactionary. The staunch, and even then he's got revolutionary kind of new elements. The staunchly conservative National Union of Solidarists, le led by Alexander Solzhenitsyn, has emerged victorious following weeks of debate in Vologda. To the fears of many more liberal candidates, the Solidarists have declared their support for civil liberties and democratic values, while also professing a desire for an increase in the role of Orthodox Christianity and cooperation between social classes. Solzhenitsyn invested with these Zars full confidence, is now tasked with building confidence in and support for his policies. It remains to be seen, however, if such a strong shift towards traditional uh, policies will be accepted by the Russian people at large. Ah, yes, 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 yes. Ah, we can still campaign. That's funny. How's the Anheuser back looking? Yeah, that is a huge OFN. Oh my God. Cape to Cairo railway win. Ooh, we got two improvements. Fantastic. Better agricultural methods. Replace Becky. Be Be Basic mechanization with mass mechanization. Effective change division training time minus 10%. Monthly population plus 10%. Uh, recruitable population factor plus 5%. Army organization regain plus 2.5%. Decidal development progress plus 25. Oh, we got three? Better research facilities, um, replaced outdated with modern. Daily political power gain minus 0 0.05. Research speed plus 5%. Resource cost modifier plus 15%. Research facilities monthly change minus 0.5. Societal development progress plus 25. Improved academic base. Replace basic literacy with primary schooling. Production efficiency cap plus 5%. Research speed plus 10%. Factory out plus 7.5%. Annual GDP growth factor plus 2.5%. Monthly poverty change plus 0 0.01. Needed consumer goods plus 1.5%. Societal development progress plus 25. Glorious. Why am I still able to do this? Wait, should I, should I still be campaigning? Oh god, okay, my bad. I didn't realise. I should, probably should have, to be honest. Alright, we'll go again for in the Transvaal then. I assume we don't have that the whole time. I assume, I assume once we have this, that it's... Yeah, here we go, the end of election season. There we are. The bright hour knocks, indeed it does. Your political tree isn't, isn't huge, yeah. Let's see how many focuses we have to do. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay. How many do you have to do? 1, 2, 3, 4. Oh, no, 1, 2, 3. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Okay, yeah, 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 we are ahead of you, no doubt. And again, how many more do we have to do? Three or four? Okay, four after this one. Alright, industry management two, thank you. Shall immediately get industry management three.
Oh, yes, it does. Fantastic. Oh, we got access to new decisions, I think. Because Soldier Netson got elected. Encourage political thought. Uh, five gain five percent stability. We'll spend ten million. The popularity of radical ideology shall shall decrease. I hope that doesn't include us. No, we shouldn't be classed as radical. Expand state welfare programs. Yes, two hundred fifty million. Our power will begin to slowly improve. Gain base stability plus two and a half percent. Increase our GDP by five percent. That's lovely. Advance develop. Oh, what happened? Oh, okay, we can't do that at the same time. That's a shame. Ooh, lovely infrastructure. Fantastic. Any event with that? I assume so. Surely. Surely we get an event for Soldier Nets in this election. Ah, I hate it when the game does this. Come on, display of the effects. There we are. Yes, yes, we do indeed get a... Um, get an event. Lay it on me. Different path. The documents in Vladimir's hands were by all accounts simple. It was not hard to read, nor was it long worded or dramatic in its tone. However, it was the contents that caused the Tsar's hand to briefly shake. Words like emergency powers restructuring from above. Another authoritarian autocratic terms f uh, flitted across the sheets in red ink. The more he looked at it, the more he couldn't help but remember communication in the past when they had when he had marched into Russia, and that fact did not put him at ease. Uh, at, at ease. My Tsar, a voice interrupted his praise, private musings as Alexander Solzhenitsyn took two steps towards him and the documents he had been handed. I understand your hesitation or any concerns about Russia's plagued with instability. These measures are an important step to securing everyone's future. Alexander's words had a certain logic to them, but his tone had cooled, and Vladimir uh, felt a simple, uh, a single pang of uncertainty ringing at the back of his mind like a siren. A uh, small little warning bell that kept ringing even as Alexander spoke. I assure you that these reconstructive measures are only for the common good, and that once Russia is unified, these measures will become less restrictive. And even as Vladimir nodded, that bell still rang. You're the fucking Tsar, Vladimir. Do something about it. For the good of the cause. Change in popularity of authoritarian democracy 5%, our administrative efficiency will begin to rapidly improve. Somebody go throughout the videos and count how many times we've had an increase to our administrative efficiency. Uh, with, with one being uh, uh, improved slowly or something like that. So, so like this one counts for three. In the minds of the Solidarists, long years of conflict and poverty have led to a sharp decline in traditional Russian morality, a decline which must be corrected if the nation is to prosper. Now invested with true political power, they can finally do so. Religion will be re-emphasized, the absurdity of class division will be combated, and traditional value central to the Russian spirit will be promoted. In due time, despite the complaints of more liberal factions from the government, the Russian people will see the value in remembering and returning to their roots. I'm going to tag over to Cheetah, make sure they're doing those decisions. Because I know you're not. I decided to fortify to our bad decision. Complete the Magadan connection, yes. Black Machinsk Rail Hub, yes. Also, Cheetah's, Cheetah's decisions don't have any description, which is upsetting. I hope, they, I hope it, that they get it in um, unfinished business. Because everyone else has them. Except, uh, I think. Does Alexander Men's decisions have them? They might have small descriptions. I know Rod Rodzevsky has them. I know Magadan has them. And I know uh, Kutsk has them. I, have, I've never, I haven't played checked as Valery Sablin. Because so I will never click on Valery Sablin. Never, ever, ever, ever. Also, let us let us read about Alexander Solzhenitsyn. He doesn't even have a description. Wow. Wow. What's slipping? No? Oh, he's our farm minister. Interesting. Wow, no descriptions anywhere. Let's read about solidarism. The road no true to voy uh, Soyuz, authoritarian democracy. Solidarism is the ideology promoted by the Vyatka based National Union of Solidarists, violently rejecting realism. It aims to provide a 20th century basis for dealing with present day issues, rejecting a purely materialistic approach to socio economic and political problems, and promoting interclass solidarity, brotherhood, Christian tolerance, and charity. They also claim to promote democratic participation in government with or without a Russian monarch, individualism, and civil liberties. Their end goal is to bring about a second revolution that is neither left nor right. See? That, that's, that's, see? About a this, is rev this is a revolutionary movement, not reactionary. That is neither left nor right, but at the front, and will rebirth Russia without returning to red or czarist errors. I find the whole Solzhenitsyn emergency powers thing is just odd and just weird. 
Its critics, on the other hand, argue that it displays a predisposition towards a corporatist organization of society and an overfriendliness to the prospect of a temporary dicta dictatorship in order to bring about their desired moral and spiritual regeneration. These critics, Solidarism is alarmingly similar to Italian bundle of sticksism, as well as the corporatism practiced in Salazarist Portugal and the former state of Austria. Pre so wow, I think that's the, one of the few references that uh, Dolphus is. No, not Dolphus. Uh, Shushnik. Yes, Shushnik. Well, Dolphus too. Tax hike! Slash it. Slash it. How is the orphan doing? Great in Abrams. I'm fairly certain the Abrams tank is named after him. I'd be surprised if it wasn't in. The future particular group is that. Well, I need to find something to do. These events are taking too damn long. Actually, I think what I'll do, first of all, is I'll delete some of these saves, because I have way too many of them. Also, I have no intention of doing a cadet playthrough, in case anyone is wondering. Unless they had them and have. Hiding election results, yeah, I was gonna say. Get off my screen. You just said you'd hide them! Now here, here they are still. Oh, because we're doing the suppressed minority voting, alright. Full of the cause, fantastic. Is that the. That's why damage is alright. Now, a temporary dictatorship. Reduces the administrative str Oh, yeah, it's like. Tino fans when Stalina creates a temporary dictatorship. Wow, my heckin' wholesome girl boss. Tino fans when Solzhenitsyn does it. Fascist. Reduce the administrative stain. Uh, stain. God damn it. Strain in our state. Decreases vote franchise elite voting policy effectiveness. Gets when the Tsar's right hand. Russia remains in chaos. And the first step in correcting this is to ensure that there exists order and stability within the Tsar's government. Without a strong benevolent leader, it is inevitable that democracy will be lost to demagoguery, populism, or worse, public controlism. The Tsar can be that leader, but he needs the Solidarists' help. Consequently, Prime Minister Solzhenitsyn has submitted legislation to grant himself emergency powers during this period of instability. His opponents call him a dictator, but they simply do not understand the enormous problems Russia currently faces. Yeah, I should be well ahead of here. If this is two more, that I can get to the Urals. Good. But yeah, it's, I don't know. Let, let me know what you guys think about the regional Viet Cong tree. I, I'm not a, I'm not a huge fan. The, the, the economic tree is, especially just seems kind of weak. I don't know. Let, let me look at everyone else's economic trees. Or who's here right now. One, two, three, four, five, six... 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. How many do I have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Okay, okay. Same as Cheetah. Now let's look at the Central Siberian Federation. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Damn, you kind of got fucked over there. Now let's look at with Siberia. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Okay, we have fourteen. Design. Okay, maybe it was just my perception of it then. Must be. Yeah, I don't. It, it's kind of heavily weighted towards the left. Military tree is nice though. Now, that's that's fine. Yeah, I gotta find gotta find something to do with myself while while we're waiting for these events. What's... 
playing around the world. Green the is the new open, right? No, it's not. You're the offense sphere? You are. Yeah. Alright. Also, yeah, Italy is so bugged, man. The, like, the blocky Nazi Nally one, but Chiano is somehow still here. And what's this? Ooh, nice. Improved worker training. Invest in scientific research. Allow education funding. Or allocate education funding, rather. Encourage agricultural mechanization. Also, I, I'm fairly confident when I say, confident when I say this that, um, that Techno Balila has been removed from SoundCloud. Um, my Italian playlist is devoid of it. For some reason. Let me check this quickly, just make sure I'm not wrong. Go into my Italian music playlist. Yeah, the Techno Bleed is gone. Go into my likes. I'll try and play... Uh, is it gone as well? I think so. Try to type in... No, to be fair, I actually haven't looked it up. Type in Techno Bleed. Oh, I think it's been... No, no. Maybe it's... Maybe it's been re-uploaded. Yeah. Well, either way, the old one is gone. That's a shame. Ah, I didn't mean to open no pet. God damn it. Ooh, advanced developmental subsidies. Spent 350 million. Nambarezny Chelny gets 2% GDP. To their GDP. 2 billing slots for synthetic refinery. Vant gets 2%. 2 billing slots thermoelectric plant. But Samo, damn. It's, uh... 1.5% of their GDP, 2 building slots, 1 level of infrastructure, and Tchaikovsky gets 1.5% to their GDP, 2 building slots, and 1 administrative office. Thank you. Fantastic all around. Let's get rid of that, we don't need it. Now, now is probably a good time to look at our divisions. How much support equipment do we have? 6,000, that, that's not bad. It's not bad. We probably won't be able to afford it for every division, but hey. Get it for the divisions that we do have. What is this division? It's looking pretty good. Alright. Might as well get rid of that, because we'll be using any and all trucks to uh, help with the motorization of our armies. Uh, yeah, cavalry isn't a thing anymore, is it? I could have sworn it's been removed. Not there. It's not there. No, it's not here. Huh. Which of you have the best suppression? A regular infantry do? Does? Huh. Okay. Now the Tsar's right hand. The Tsar and his council sat in a conference room within the Imperial Palace. A meeting of the council had been called by Prime Minister Solzhenitsyn to discuss the future of the Empire. The doors of the room opened and the Prime Minister strode in with a small group of party functionaries at his back. Once the usual pleasantries were exchanged, he began the meeting. Honourable members of the council, I am sure you are all interested in the purpose of this meeting. I have come straight from the latest session of the Duma with news that is vital to the Empire. The council members glanced among themselves with some apprehension. They were usually privy to the goings on within the Duma, but they had been summoned early in the day before any of them could hear news from the session. So the session continued as of the end of today's legislative session. I have been granted emergency powers for unilateral action within the Empire. The Duma has granted me these powers in order to allow the Empire to better end the instability that has ruled Russia for these past decades. Know that I take these powers with much reluctance and will relinquish them when the uh, crisis has passed and Russia has been united under our rule. Surprise could be seen on the faces of those present. The Tsar himself only kept his composure as the words left his Prime Minister's mouth. Or only just kept his composure as the words left his Prime Minister's mouth. Solzhenitsyn spoke as though a great burden had been placed on his shoulders. But Vladimir could see the pleasure in his eyes. He gave off the impression of a cat that had just caught the canary. A sort of smugness that was at odds with the front he put up for the other men of the council. Despite the reassuring words that came out of the Prime Minister's mouth, Vladimir could only feel a cold weight settle into his gut. He remained silent throughout the meeting, unable to properly find his voice. When it was all over, he retired to the study to deal with the migraine that troubled him throughout the day. I don't know why the Solidaris are being portrayed as fucking... Um, Villains. Well, like, if anything, like, the villain path should be the VNS path. An infant democracy dies strangled in its crib. Alright. Arm port heavy machinery, in state poverty relief programs, and hire foreign instructors. So 
solidarism is based on democracy and individual rights, so it's this is this is weird. Ooh, that'll increase soon. Good. Hell, that'll increase soon as well. Fantastic. Ah, our ministry isn't looking too good. Well, that's fine, I suppose. Yeah, it's alright. We, we already do have a professional army, that's fantastic. We'll most likely get two Spartan discipline. You can't do the rest of your tree until you finish this, can you? No, you can't. That's right. Hmm. Spend the power grid, yes. Fourteen billion, let's see what the rest of you've got. Ten billion? Damn, that's not bad. Yours, yours might even be ahead of me. Thirteen point five six billion. You will probably overtake us, to be honest. What do we have out of Cheetah? Four point three two six one eight percent growth. Alright. Why have you just that's weird. You've done a load of the military tree, completely ignore the economic tree. You work left to right for a reason. Fifty-seven percent popularity. Yeah, that's definitely exaggerated. We're dealing with the poverty rate. Well, not nearly as fast as Yagoda dealt with it. Bloody hell, it was minus point five a month. Ridiculous. The orphan gives East Africa its independence. Oh, that's a strong East African Federation right there. Also, also the state of Zambia. Look, look at how strong the red support is. Why is it so strong? Or the public controller support, rather. The Imperial... Oh, shit, did I not read that? I don't think I did. With the close of the historic Congress of Vlog, the selection of a cabinet and the appointment of a prime minister and governing party, the time has come for the final step in drafting the constitution. This is not something to be taken lightly, as this imperial constitution, the founding document of Russian monarchism, will define politics in the state for years to come. The eyes of all are on the delegations as the debates begin. The new constitution has been drafted for the empire. Our administrative efficiency will begin to rapidly improve again. My god. Gain plus 5% based ability. What is that putting it on? It's on 16.88 a month. That's the most high. That's the highest I've ever seen any side development go a month. Gets rid the empire. Now an empire reborn. Gets rid the empire remade. Unlock decision to exert influence in the southern Urals. Gain base stability plus 5%. With the Congress of Long to complete any partisan situation addressed. The sovereignty has at long last. And with the shedding of much blood secured both internal physical and political stability. Western Russia has had little of either for decades. And with their existence now being understood. Popular and political support for the government is increasing across all sectors and social groupings. There still remain many problems of course. But to many of them uh, they are of less than the fundamental physical security of themselves and their families. And the Tsar can take out that he has finally provided such two millions of Russians along the prime enough. Consumer goods production efficiency too has been researched. Good. 99% stability. Fantastic. How are we doing in terms of our stuff here? 62% for prisons. 62% for army bases. Oh no, sorry. 62% for hospitals. Oh, no, 62% for administrative, uh, administrative offices. Um, 62% for army bases, 100% for prisons, 44% for hospitals, and 100% for schools. Fantastic. Well, it says 45 out of 46, how is that 100? Makes no sense. Hospital construction one, thank you. Social building construction two, yes, very important. Oh, let's read through these. Industry management one, the art of industrial management is a burgeoning new field with enormous potential to improve our production yields a thousandfold. From ensuring that all the paperwork that coordinates the activities of the four M's man, material, 
machine and method are in order to simplify wasteful processes and supply chains in order for our industry to compete on the global scale and satisfy our domestic demands. Both private companies and our own nationalized firms are beginning to de uh, dedicate significant sections of their managerial class to this new discipline. Production units to GDP ratio modifier plus 1.5%. Industry management too, with the increasing rationalization of our industrial practices comes friction with the ones who actually carry them out. Industrial unions have emerged as a powerful force representing the workers and their demands for higher wages and increased benefits. It is the job of the new industrial manager to accommodate their demands while maintaining high productivity, either for stating its demands or the voracious appetite of the free market. Another 1.5% production units to GDP ratio modifier. Fantastic. We get another one in. Now industry management three. Automotive companies were the first to realize how dramatically production output and quality increase by utilizing a system of group assembly, where a group of workers is responsible for the entire process of assembly of one car, as opposed to the previous method of line assembly. Now these ideas are spreading rapidly as the cutting edge in industrial management, and their result in productivity are tremendous, as are the effects on morale. Fantastic. Number 5% based. Oh, we hit 100. Lovely. Poverty rate is hitting us, trade unions policy is hitting us. What is our trade unions policy? It's either none or non public control is only. Uh, legal, fucking hell, yeah. Oh, yeah, I forgot about state control as well. Now, the empire remade. Now, we'll insert influence of the southern worlds. New day is dawned on Western Russia, now known as the Sovereignty of Western Russia, and it is one of peace. The legacy of the Russian Empire, once thought lost forever, has returned, and its efforts cannot be more apparent to the people uh, it now counts among its citizens. Political stabilization has arrived through the efforts of a democratically elected government and the establishment of an, an imperial constitution. In turn, security has been achieved through the efforts of military and security services in combating bandits, partisans, and revolutionaries of all kinds. As a result, millions of Russians within the imperial borders are feeling something they have not felt for a very long time. Hope. The sovereignty moves forward into an age where a functional and united Russian Empire is within its grasp. New challenges will be faced and hard decisions will, as always, have to be made. But united behind both the government and the eternally uh, stabilizing and benevolent presence of Tsar Vladimir III, the future is bright. The future is bright. Tsar Vladimir III. Long will the Tsar forever onwards. Now. Wait. What? Why is there a Septon versus Zero? What the fuck? Why? Oh, no, no. Wait, what? The EuroLeague is more receptive to... Uh, you know, I can kind of understand that. What about you? Oh, no. That's bullshit. Oh, well. Decisions that no check it is. Or decision that no check, is it? Decision... Oh, that's not that's all right. It's all decision that no checks. Yeah. Hmm. You think you're going to muscle me out, huh? I'm afraid not. Yes, I did just spend a ton of money there, but it will be worth it. Yeah. Hospitals, schools, businesses, jobs, infrastructure, military bases, extraction, agriculture. The race for the Urals. This is a great time to love the sign, actually. Now the race for the Urals, to our east lay the Great Ural Mountains, the traditional border between Europe and Asia. This great mountain range is critically important to our unification ambitions. In the aftermath of the West Russian conflict and the collapse of the WRF, the region was left bereft of any central authority. Many communes and villages looked to either the city of Orenburg or the soldiers of the Ural League for protection. Our intelligence reports that others fell under the way of NKVD remnants in, in Magnitogorsk or were sacked by Derla Wagner's brigade. The rise in tension after the end of the German terror bombing resulted in conflicts that have led to the region's current power structure. The Urals present, uh, present both an opportunity as well as a threat to our nation, seizing the Area's resource and population would be a great boon to our cause. However, on the far side of the Urals, another unifier state claims its, its legitimacy as the true Russian government. Were this opponent to capture the Urals, they would be able to station troops on our side of the mountain range, threatening our eastern provinces. We must thus assert our pre uh, prominence in the region through any way necessary. Our diplomats and generals have prepared an array of tools to bring the Urals into our sphere of interest. It is projected that this side, with the best combination of prestige, diplomatic success, and military intimidation, will be able to be the first to tip over local elites into accepting unification, where the, the, the diplomatic option to fail military intervention remains an option, an option that our eastern rivals are not likely to accept easily. The race of the Urals is upon us. We will triumph over our Siberian rivals and integrate another part of shattered Russia into our growing nation. A new theatre. Beautiful. Now, the Imperial Recovery Committee gets about the status of the economy with the establishment of the sovereignty. 
Ah. We can no longer rely on a vodka distillery to provide a significant portion of the state's budget. We must instead develop and execute an integrated economic plan on a national scale. To do this, the Tsar has announced the formation of the Imperial Economic Council, which will assemble uh, experts from both the nation and emigre communities and task them with overseeing such development and implementation. Through intelligent and consistent planning, the economy and industrial base will both grow, improve the lives of ordinary Russians while also preparing us for the eventual campaign of national unification. Social Credit Triumph in Canada. Commanding majority. Sock reds. Huh. I don't really read about that. What I do, what I, what is about authoritarian democracy? Okay. Yeah, I was going to say it was developed in Britain. That's right. This way. 0.9% is nice, but there's 2% here. Academic recovery. Our research staff. So you gotta go for the research staff on this. The status of the economy, although we've emerged victorious in Western Russia through both military and political efforts, this is cold comfort to the many Russians left unemployed, homeless, and hungry. The economy of many regions outside Vyatka proper were, are, and remain nearly completely destroyed with abominable living conditions and virtually no advancement prospects for those living in them. However, at the Tsar's direction, the Imperial Recovery Committee has drafted a comprehensive plan of construction and reform. No, oh, excuse me. They pledge to focus on the repair and construction of domestic industry, the re-establishment of a competent academic base, and the introduction of significant currency and financial reforms. Direct foreign investment will also be vigorously pursued, though it will be very difficult and require hard decisions to be made. The experts of the committee are confident that if the course is stayed, their plan will succeed. Now invest in construction. They further, they further say that such success will not only serve the millions of Russians crying out for prosperity, but also provide the economic base needed to reasonably pursue further unification efforts. The Tsar, who himself gathered the committee together for this purpose, has no reason to doubt them. It's time to get to work. Now improve relations with Ornberg. But this wish was more tailored to solidarism. Like, like the rest of the tree would, would change based on who got elected, you know? Now, academic recovery, add public education, our academic base will begin to improve, get spent to brain train, our academic base will slowly start improving, highly increases education elite only policy effectiveness for a very long time, available education in Russia has been minimal when it has been available at all, as our economy continues to recover, this deficiency can and must now be addressed without educated citizens we cannot continue to develop our economy beyond subsistence levels and so we will invest in it at, at the insistence of the imperial recovery committee a comprehensive plan for the development of a national educational infrastructure from primary to tertiary will be created and resources allocated to implement it in this way we can prepare for the future and leave as part of our legacy a generation of intelligent innovative and forward-thinking russians Beautiful. Now, industry management four production units to GDP ratio modifier plus one and a half percent. The introduction of the system of quality circles, whereby workers are now involved in the management process by being allowed to make suggestions to improve production efficiency, has started yet another revolution in the management of industries globally. In some cases, designated leaders have been given the right to halt production entirely if they notice a flaw occurring. While this has tremendously increased build and output quality, it has concentrated a huge amount of power in the hands of the workers, something the field appears to be concerned about. Tag CHT, make sure they're doing those decisions. Oh, the Far East, nice and developed. They have a port, they'd better use the goddamn thing. That's your debt ceiling. 
130%. Oh, you got close to it. You're running a horrific deficit, too. Why don't we just do this? Oh, we've got all the expenditure for snaps, though, in fairness to you. Consumer goods production efficiency one. Consumer goods comprise the things our citizens enjoy in their normal everyday lives. However, inefficiencies in their production can prove wasteful towards other needs of the state. Therefore, technological improvements uh, should be used to increase the efficiency of production and keep both the nation and its uh, people satisfied. Consumer goods production factors two percent. Aren't these just all like the same thing written differently? Consumer goods production efficiency too. They may be well desired by our people, but the fact remains that still remains that consumer goods put a burden on our nation's production capabilities and can clog, clog up factories and divest resources from being put to use in national needs, such as military equipment. Improving this issue will be much needed for the future. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's the same thing over and over again. Consumer goods consist of the wide array of necessities our people make use of consistently. It is therefore vital that we learn to manufacture such goods with the least waste. Uh, so that more of our citizens can procure such goods while also allowing for our country to invest more resources into important military matters. Half a million men. Fantastic. Oh damn, we also have an Air Force in the field. Oops. How much is that costing us? Currently it's 210 million. Should be that high, surely. We'll see how much it changes, see if the Air Force costs money. It should do. No reason why it wouldn't. Alright, let's I hope you enjoyed today's episode. We got through the entirety of our political tree and we have started our economic tree. In the next episode, we'll continue and hopefully finish the economic tree and maybe even start the military tree. I shall see you then. Also, secure the Southern Urals. That's very much very important. What's your uh, GDP? Probably over a billion, should be. 1.07, alright. But you probably don't have a core on this, do you? You don't. Alright. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to tag over to Orenburg and make that a core of theirs just so that. Um, so that we don't have to repair the shit, basically, once we uh, annex it. I'll do the same for Magnitogorsk in, uh, in the Ural Guard. Debug. Oh, oops, I need I still need that, my bad. And core, 846. Tag URL. Ah, I could use the tool pack to do this. <laughs> Damn it. Oopsies. Now, and core 582. Put your population at what? 1.16 million? Okay. And yours? Come on. 2.56 million, that's fantastic. Tag VYT. Oh, we oh, the white army is going to have Redimsev. It's like it's like when we had the NKVD generals of Stalina. That was funny. But all right, let's hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, please consider liking, subscribing, and commenting down below. I shall see you in the next episode. See you then.